welcome to The Crossing. This is an exhibition put together by me to celebrate the changes over the European life, um, European occupation of the river, around where the bridge is and around the earth. Being the top of the river for navigation, it was a very important place for, for walls, for crossings, for for action and people putting produce on boats. So we can go over to sort of one of the real early ones here of um, George Evans, 1809. It was a very popular watercolour. He did of his Thompson Square up here, the military buildings, the town is more back here, the bridge is about here somewhere. And it's hard to pin down these ones because there's a lot of them and a lot of people would say oh can I have a copy of that painting so Evans or other people would do a copy of it so things got very hard to attribute things to so this is just a photo copy of it um, so he was a surveyor so um, uh, it's rather nice the trading vessels coming up the river um, um, you can see the flow of the river with the after the floods um, and here's an, another fairly important one, I think. It's 1816, it's of a flood in Windsor. Here's Ben's Point over here, which is the, the beach area. And here's Windsor Town in here. So you've got the road boats everywhere. Um, it's 1816, so it'd be all convict power. So it was by far the easiest way of getting around the Hawkesbury during a flood time. And with a lot of these early paintings and photographs, or many paintings, they are to show what life was like to the people back home. So um, this particular one, it's um, uh, George, uh, Captain Wallace. Um, I should remember James Wallace. That's it. Sorry, <laughs> right. uh, an engraved boat. Preston, a convict engraver. Um, there's an early painting we can duck down to of this one. This one was taken about 1815 by Wallace, and what he had was a camera lucida, which is some little lens device where you clip onto your drawing board, and then you can see the landscape in front of you, and you can see the page, and it's superimposed, so you draw in the outline, and and then you can watercolour it in later. So. This is really handy because when you went to a place, you can come back or tell others what the landscape looked like. Mm -hmm. So there's no photos then to show them. So um, it's obvious uh, there's the top of ships down here. So it's sort of from about 100 metres or so downstream from where the bridges are now. And um, then for his superannuation, you had Preston do the engraving up there. Um, for, did you want to go back to that one? Yep. Um, Preston did this engraving from the same place. Um, um, these original ones were, it was about 1820 that was done, and he did a folio of about 20 different engravings, um, and these were sold around Sydney and back home. And I tend to call it superannuation. You know, this is. Um, and it was a, you can just see the crease where it was in a book. Um, this is a reproduction Friends of the Hawkesbury Library did for a bicentenary project. We bought an original, uh, which is upstairs in the gallery, and it wasn't coloured, but a lot of them were coloured. So we had um, reproductions made of them with a, a little bit in here to make it hard to if anyone tried to flog them off as originals, but um, it was just lovely because here was the remains of a wharf with a ship in. Um, there's the punt, a rowboat with two passengers, um, some remains of the local Aboriginal people sitting around a campfire. Um, there's windmills across Cornwallis type area or up near St Matthews, probably near where St Matthews are now. Uh, this is probably old government house here, up on the left. Um, and, uh, yeah, a, a friend has a, an original coloured version of it, but we just weren't able to get it. It's owned by the university, so um, 
we just couldn't get it to this one to be hand covered and it's so much easier to read when it's with the hand colouring on it. Um, oh, this little one is it's FC Terry it's a steel engraving 1853 and uh, it's almost the same scene as this one um, um, the bridge would be in here now the doctor's house doesn't have any balcony on it um, it's got some gates here um, so it's rather nice um, that was published in a It was one of those uh, big picture books of life in Australia type books. Mm. Now, um, oh, we come to the bridge. Um, we've got a couple of oil paintings on the bridge. I might take it back down here to the water um, oh, Here we got the original ferry that went across. Um, the ferry master's house was just down from the doctor's house, so it becomes fairly important. So there's always this little ferry that that pulled across, um, and then William Walker in the 1860s, when they opened the railway out here, he got the local politician or the state representative to come down and look at the state of the ferry and it was all sunken and really bad so then he started really pressing for a bridge um, there was debate of high level bridge low level bridge um, they opted to save us money by doing a low level bridge that went under 27 times during the construction <laughs> saving us money <laughs> also it was very difficult for wagons to get out because of the rise of the thing um, it cost ten thousand um, pounds. The there's a engraving taken from a photo. Um, this the photo was taken on the day of the opening on the twenty second of August, eighteen seventy four, and the engraving was done over. Somehow they got the photograph back into Sydney. The engraving was done overnight for the newspaper the next day. It was quite amazing. This. Um, Ebenezer and David sign. Um, apparently six to seven thousand people come. There was a procession from the railway station down to the bridge, over the bridge. Um, they raced it at a bullock. Um, if you read the write-up, there's um, one wonderful little write-up of J.C. or Fitzpatrick, who started the Gazette, talking about the how awful the shivers he got from the hacked up bullock over the, over the day. But the journalist, or not the journalist, the Sutherland, the man opening the bridge, talked about how Hawkesbury people could do bullet race to perfection and all this. And it was just wonderful, the thing. Um, the bridge was quite difficult to build because lots of sand. The pylons go down about 40 feet. Well, about what's that, 12, 12 metres. Um, and actually it was a cylinder pushed down and a man got inside to pump out the sand and hack up the wood from inside. It was pressurised air pressure, so he's got a candle down there, uh, cold, dark, um, and, a, and sort of airlocks where they could pull the bucket loads of debris out. And it went down through, was it 20 odd feet of sand and then four feet of, of rock and then it got implanted, um, embedded into the rock by big rods and then the pylon next door would be joined up to it by divers to, to be, and then the whole thing was filled up with brick and concrete. So it was a hugely complicated and successful venture um, because of the floods it was just, um, and they haven't moved, yeah, which is nice. Um, so the very early bridges um, yeah, we'll go back to these ones. Um, uh, oh, Maud, Maud Adelaide Beck. Um, we're not quite sure of the date. It was only recently discovered. Um, Christine Payne had the painting. Um, Carol Roberts had all this information about this lady doing a painting from her studio, which is above where Fitzgerald Motors are now in in Fitzgerald Street um, and here is oh, showing the new low-level bridge 
and the punt house, the doctor's house would be just here to the right. You're looking downstream and everything added up and the type of light she used, everything was added up to her, her painting even though it's not signed. Um, so we've did a very good attribution, attribution to her. So, um, so what was a fairly, I shouldn't say, but fairly ordinary little painting, all of a sudden has a, has a, a an artist associated with it. So um, she got married in 1907, and there's no record of her painting after that, or exhibiting. She used to exhibit before she got married. And this one's 1920s, Thomas Campbell, who lived in the little house Balaclava up at, in between the railway and South Windsor shopping centre. Um, did lots of... You can hardly tell what he... He never had a real... He had a style, he was very good, did lots of illuminated manuscripts with all the curly writings and things. Um, here it's from downstream from the Wilberforce side to the doctor's house um, and St Matthew's up here. Um, yeah, and just life on the river around 1920s. It was, um, all these are really good because they tend not to lie. They, um, and I think the library owns this one which is really good. Um, This one was got a good idea. It was painted from the bridge. It's Arthur Streeton, um, who was a, probably the greatest Australian painter ever known, if not right up there. Um, from the bridge, and it shows the wharf, which is a little triangular shaped wharf, so two boats could get in easily at the same time. Um, and uh, so he came out here in 1896 and painted purple noons, transparent might, and quite a few paintings where he stayed at North Richmond. Um, yeah. This one, Cedric Emanuel. Cedric did lots of sketchbooks. Do I this one? Yeah. He did lots of sketchbooks of Windsor and sketchbook of Richmond and Woolloomooloo and all these different places. And, uh, so it's from downstream from the bridge from the Windsor side. Um, and it's starting to show that thing of uh, working boats and pleasure boats. So you're starting to see um, a change of attitude in the river. Um, it was first engraved in 1939 and he kept on, I don't know why he didn't do new work, but he kept on reviving a lot of old work. So this was a reprint done in 1981 ah, and it's absolute cracker. Uh, yeah. Lots of old photos and also in old photos I love backgrounds of uh, the doctor's house still doesn't have a, a roof on it on this one or that one. Um, um, I was looking through this old photo, it doesn't seem to have much information then all of a sudden you see what's this guy doing down here because the river was very much a trading river so if you had heavy produce to send you took it by the river not by road. Um, and then all of a sudden I realised it's, it's not a Furphy brand cart, but it's a Furphy type cart. It's a water cart where the guys filling up and take it around town, put the horse troughs and things around town. And, and just this slow life on the river of the old barns across the back, the, uh, the car's probably not invented at this stage because it's just this forward planning of getting it all. This one shows the low level bridge, it was first built with wooden beams, um, huge big 44 feet long by 18 inches square um, and here is Sunny Bray Payne's old house and the water tower behind so it's taken from the Wilberforce side downstream and all these buildings are the old Cadell's winery, and uh, uh, brewery rather, not winery. And, um, it wasn't around for too long, I think it was 1840s it was built then it got totally wrecked in the 1867 flood. So, uh, 
There's a few little remnants of it as stone blocks in Payne's backyard. Um, and here's the bridge in the background with from the terrace looking north um, and Willie Mosang's garden, the Chinese market garden itself. So it really puts the place into history. Um, here we have the possibly taken around the 1950s, 60s um, with the raft base in the background looking back to Karajong and um, Bowen Mountain. No, the muse that you can drop, stand a horse across the bridge now. Apparently it's 19,000 vehicles a day cross over <laughs> when the bridge ceased functioning. It's a <laughs> you know, thrill seeker and it's rather nice that the horse is watching it. It's the pace. And, uh, and up until recently they used to have boat races here right up beside the bridge and that was the finish of the old bridge to bridge race. Um, I'm not quite sure the exact numbers now but it was three and a half hours or something for the first one but then 28 or 29 minutes to do the, the most recent bridge to bridge from Brooklyn Bridge up to here. Now we start getting into the floods and, and people handling the floods um, and everyone just pulled resources and did it and got on with it. Um, and here there's a party in sort of early 20th century just getting the debris off. The debris always attaches itself to this one spot along the bridge. So the people just got out there and threw it off. Um, and again here it's another party cleaning up. Um, and a couple of these are interesting too. The, yeah, the, the light fitting here out in the middle of the people in front of the doctor's house, that's where everyone stopped and looked at the river, at the flood. Um, early this year they were still there. And um, so the light fitting is the same as the one here on this one of, of outside flood times. But um, yeah, it's just, well, these are 1940s, uh, 52 floods. So that's the the restaurant across the other side of the, the bridge. So I'd never, I don't know what the little huts were. Um, and this is a 1929 aerial photograph from the comic, comic collection. And um, of Windsor, you've got the bridge, South Creek, um, South Windsor's up this end. Um, this was done by a, a RAF aerial pilot and he had a, an old biplane and he had cameras sticking out in different spots and he, he made the most wonderful photographs of, of Sydney and around here and um, they're wonderful because it's a real reflection you can reflect on what was where then, you know, the buildings, the roads and the changes and all that. Um, now we start getting into the more modern ones. Um, this is the 1988 flood and the usual bank of debris is all all there and they had a, a road grader either side with a blade down and they'd charge at each other to make a great big bow wave and that'd float all the, wash all the debris off. <laughs> and I imagine these cowboys <laughs> that they're not going to do or they're not, they're not allowed to do stuff like that anymore. But no one had an idea of making sure the bridge is all there first <laughs> or checking it but you just hoe in and and here we I haven't got any photos much of people driving over it but we used to drive over the damn thing with you couldn't see it uh, you just had the thing and people would just sit out there and muse away it was yeah yeah I find it was um, and now you're not allowed near the place yeah so but at least very few people are getting killed, so that's good. Um, um, here's a 1985 photo of, aerial photo of 
the bridge um, and the motel has just recently been built so it's it's pretty well winter as we know it my house <laughs> um, here um, in 1993 Stockton no not Stockton Port Stephenson Newcastle Council rebuilt a copy of William the fourth William the fourth was the first steamship built in Australia so it had side paddles on it it had masts that folded down to go to do river trade um, and it was really important because the river trade was the way you move heavy volumes and the old ways was to um, like with um, the Norfolk here um, you'd, it took it would take three days to get upstream so you had to catch the tide rail like places if it, put the sail up if it worked um, and then when the tide went out you rested and then waited for the new tide to come in and, um, whereas here with the, the steamer you could fold the mast down you could go under bridges use sail if you needed to to because coal or steam engines weren't very efficient so you had to use as much outside help as you can and, and, uh, well, you've got just nice photos of Oh, this beautiful big casuarina tree that got undermined and fell over that was at the old wharf um, in a frosty morning so many trees have grown up now so it's quite amazing you can lose the views my, my painting class there's a um, just go down it looks like winter it's just just beautiful to sit down there and, and paint things. Um, this is the Norfolk replica. It was built in the 1980s by Ben Cuthbertson, OAM, a guy from Tasmania. Um, the original Norfolk was Matthew Flinders' one of his boats that went up to uh, Moreton Bay and a few vo voyages like that, and it went up to Windsor. So Cuthbertson retraced all of his voyages and um, the Norfolk was built on Norfolk Island out of Norfolk Island Pine the original this was built out of Tasmanian Pines and um, the original was uh, hijacked by um, convicts and were going to uh, disappear and go off from, to the free world and um, they wrecked it on it was called Pirate Point, but it's now Stockton Beach in Newcastle. So uh, it got wrecked there. It was the most beautiful little boat. It was just stunning, about 30 feet long. Had a crew of 10. Um, well, everyone rowed. Um, um, so, yes, two of Carol Roberts' photos from 2010 of the bridge. I find that one of the nicest photos of it, it just looks terrific um, also I should say you can see it here uh, where the bridge was raised that was the original deck height and then they raised it the eight feet after um, in the 1890s so to get around it they built a temporary wooden bridge to take the traffic while they raised it up and then they took the old wooden bridge out so, I haven't seen a photograph of the old wooden bridge, which is a real shame. Uh, now we stay and get into my stuff. Um, most of my life I record history. It's, I tend not to make things up, it's just recording it as it is. Um, if it's not, if it doesn't look very good, I'm in the wrong place or it's the wrong subject. So this is from the bottom of my place with William IV here, here waiting. It was, it was up here for about a week. Um, so that gave me plenty of good time. Um, the doctor's house, the bridge, um, and again, it's almost the same scene as the um, George Wallace, song. Um, camera the cedar, and um, engraving mm -hmm. that we first saw, uh, looking up to where the windmills were. Um, and 
it's a bit hard to do the history of the area without doing the Korg tent. They were there for, was it 2,083 days. It was such a massive effort to, to do. So they had this little tent. This is the night the tent, the, when the tent come down. So I sat across, um, across the um, George Street from it. So, so a few minutes after that, it all, it all come down. Um, and these are the original paintings that I thought I'd do before all this exhibition come together. Um, for a while, when the bridge is being built, the whole place is in such a chaotic mess. It's not chaotic, but it looks chaotic. Um, so, also I was referencing George Evans and other people with their paintings. This one's from just behind the Corp tent in Thompson Square. Um, I do like signs and things, I think they really, and poles that break up landscape. So, looking across to Freeman's Reach Road, uh, the big house on the corner, um, and the barge, and just machines and stuff happening everywhere. Um, and I thought it was quite amusing on the shade cloth they had archaeological um, oh, salvage happening here. I thought that was rather amusing, <laughs> ripping into the place. Um, so it's one of those ones where I've sort of held back my politics on it and I just record it just as is. Um, let people make up their own mind pretty well. Of, uh, but then when it all gets finished it'll be all prettied up and we will forget what it looked like. And this one's a direct reference to George Evans where he had his military buildings up here, Thompson Square, um, the old bridge. Um, and the composition I like also, these paintings, most of these are done with my own earth pastels, so crushed rocks to make my own. Um, I like the idea of this diamond shaped composition that brings around those blokes doing the, also a bit of a reference to Bruegel, a Dutch painter, Dutch I think, that did village scenes um, of people doing things. Um, and this guy's my favourite, and you know, he's on his phone. Yeah. It's such a mobile phone look that that pit stance has never happened in any other era <laughs> so I rather like that and there's all sorts of little tents and guys here and guys up here having their lunch and their this cranes drilling or lifting things in and um, so actually the river is just in there um, so and the river hardly gets a mention in it uh, but these machines are just so huge um, and for such a big part of our lives for such a, now such a short time because it's all disappearing. Um, here is one of the little uh, uh, sketches I did from Thompson Square um, and it's a plain air, it's one of those little sketches you do, you, um, you're not quite sure if it's going to be good or not, you just hit or miss and I rather like the colours of which I can't get in my earth colours, but, but these, um, so there's no detail much. Um, this one's in my earth palette on the blue paper. Um, it's, um, it's in 8th of March 2015. Wendy Matthews did a concert there. Here's Wendy and Michael King, her guitarist. Um, the concert was very short, so I just set myself up. I could see the two microphones set up, so I drew everything around them, what I could get in as much detail of the crowd and the people and the, the tents and all that. And then as soon as they walked out, you knew you got 10 minutes to, to get them in. So, so that was good. Um, here is the flood of, or the, the little flood of 2020. Um, Here's the bridge going across in there, the debris pile, um, the police tape across, um, and just all of a sudden the signs become almost humorous. Yeah, watch for push bikes and things, and here's the new bridge starting to creep into it all now. And, uh, um, and the, 
the tape on the tree so you know it's condemned one for that. Um, this is the last one in the, the whole series. It's, um, it was the 15th of May 2020. It's the last day of service. This is done just, just almost after sunset. Um, it was getting very dark and, and here's the old bridge and the new bridge and the people working in the headlights and the cars and things. And, it was from Howe Park, Macquarie Park rather, across the road and um, it was quite poignant because the opening of the original bridge was six, seven thousand people and all circuses and hoopla and all this thing and I've, in the little right I just said and, and the old bridge closed overnight and there was no fanfare. So it was, it was quite poignant I think of, of just getting that little glimpse in time of, of of its last day or the last few cars to go across it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>